Are you still spending your hard-earned key gems on Galaxy Souls when there are much better ways to obtain them, and even for free? We'll see shortly that it is indeed possible to obtain Galaxy Souls from enemies at the mines, but first let us begin Spring Year 2, Days 22 through 25 of the Stardew Valley Min-Max and 100% Perfection Guide. We have a huge variety of objectives today, including taking on Key's Kindness Challenge to give out 50 loved gifts in a week, and we'll also take care of crop harvests and a cycle of starfruit wine, and many other little objectives as well. Day 24 will be the day of the Flower Dance Festival, which we will need to attend for perfection. We'll also have two Skull Cavern dives. The first will be on a super luck day with a magic rock candy, but using almost no staircases. The second will be on the worst bad luck day, and we'll challenge ourselves to make it past floor 100 without using a single crafted staircase. For now, let's get started with day 22, a neutral luck day, by storing our items from yesterday's Skull Cavern dive. We ended up with well over 1,000 iridium ore, which should be a decent supply to keep smelting into bars for some extra cash. We check the mail and receive a fried calamari from Linus, which is actually a pretty nice gift to receive, as we can just re-gift this to Pierre, who loves it. We craft four more crystallariums and place them in the jade shed, and collect the jades while we are in there. After this, we head back inside the house to give Krobus a wild horseradish, then we head to our kitchen and cook up some pancakes and sashimi. The sashimi is a quest item for Pierre, and the pancakes are a loved gift for Jody. We do already have 10 hearts with Jody, but you'll see shortly why we will be grabbing a whole bunch of gifts to give out, including ones for NPCs we already have max friendship with. After going through our storage chests and filling up our inventory with gifts for most of the NPCs, we warp on over to the beach and head straight to Willy's shack and take his boat to Ginger Island. We head past the resort and straight through the island farm without stopping and arrive at the Golden Walnut Room. We wanted to get here first thing to pick up the Key's Kindness quest, which requires us to give out 50 loved gifts in a single week. This is not too challenging, it just takes very careful planning to execute efficiently and not waste time. We also wanted to obtain the quest first thing, so we can start giving out gifts to the NPCs afterwards. We swing down by the fruit trees and collect the bananas and mangoes and place them right in our storage chest. Then we journey through the jungle into Leo's hut to give him a duck feather, and after take the boat back to the valley. We give Willy a pumpkin, who we already have 10 hearts with, but in order to complete Keith's challenge to give 50 loved gifts, We'll have to give out some to those who we already have max friendship with. Next, we stop inside Elliot's cabin and give him a pomegranate, then take the shortcut over to Cindersat Forest where we are met with a cutscene. This is Penny's 8 heart cutscene, activated when entering Cindersat Forest between 9am and 4pm. Penny is having a picnic with Vincent and Jazz and asks us to be a guest speaker for the children. It might be a little strange for the children to listen to the dude that randomly enters their homes to give them grapes and flowers, but regardless, we tell Penny we'd love to for 10 points of friendship. If we were not enthusiastic and chose sure, we would gain none, and if we told her we can't stand kids, well, consider whatever we had with Penny over as it loses 1500 points of friendship, which is 6 whole hearts. While we speak to the kids, we get a few dialogue options, which have no impact on friendship, and Vincent asks if goblins kidnap girls for dinner, but we all know that they much prefer void mayonnaise. Penny sends off the kids for some alone time, and asks us if we would want to be a parent. We can say absolutely, or I guess so, for plus 20 friendship points with Penny. She says she's glad we feel this way, but unfortunately for her, we are already taken by Krobus. We head over to Leia's cottage and give her a goat cheese, then head into the ranch to give Jazz a fairy rose and Shane a hot pepper. When we exit, we are met with another cutscene, this time Haley's Eight Heart event, which is activated in all seasons except winter with sunny weather, between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Haley wants help riding a cow, so we help her and take some photos with her. She falls off, gets muddy, and has to return home for a shower. We will be following Haley home shortly to give her a gift, but when entering the town, we get yet another cutscene. 
This is Shane's Seven Heart event, which is triggered in town between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. with sunny weather. And we must also have at least two hearts with both Emily and Clint. Shane is filming a Joja Cola commercial, which is quite odd as the town's Joja Mart has been shut down and abandoned, but I suppose Shane still might have some connections with the company. He asks us to walk in the background to make the scene feel more natural, and thanks to us he gets a good cut, although we never find out if he actually wins the money for the contest. After this we give Vincent a grape, Jody some pancakes, and Kent a blue jazz. We enter Haley's home and find her in the kitchen. Must have been a quick shower, but we give her a coconut and then Emily a wool, and then an amethyst, which was for a quest from Clint, which puts us at eight hearts with Emily, so we can now give her a bouquet and start dating her. We also have an apricot for her from a quest, then leave her house and give Penny an emerald. Next, we arrive at the special orders board and select Linus's community cleanup quest, which will reward us with the recipe for fiber seeds. After this, we give Gus an orange, Alex a blue jazz, George a leek, and Evelyn a fairy rose. Then we make our way to Pierre's and give Abigail an amethyst, then a sashimi to Pierre for a quest, and a fried calamari as a loved gift. We buy 30 kale and potato seeds, only because I realized we don't actually have any of these crops in our chest stocks, and we will want some for cooking recipes. I also buy some parsnip seeds since we'll need those at the end of the spring to preserve the farmland for summer. We give Marnie a pink cake before leaving, then make our way up to the carpenter shop where we first upgrade our most recent shed to a big shed, then give Robin a goat cheese, Maru and Demetrius a strawberry, and Sebastian a void egg. After this, we warp right on back to the farm, get our inventory organized, and harvest some of the spring forgeables while replanting them with the potato seeds we just bought. We also collect the battery packs which have been sitting since the last lightning storm, and then take care of the basic farm chores including harvesting the greenhouse, petting the animals, and collecting the cave mushrooms. We still have more potato and kale seeds to plant, so I utilize all the space right under our sheds which is still covered by sprinklers, then we use some of the empty space in the top left of the farm, placing down quality sprinklers since we still have many of those, and this setup will be very temporary, but anyway, we plant the remaining potato and kale seeds, water them, and now we will have plenty of these crops for cooking later on. I return to the chests to get organized, and then take the mini obelisk to the bottom of the farm to collect the fish pond row, and give the sturgeons a nautilus shell, and the super cucumbers three gold bars. After making sure we have everything we need for the mines, we head to the bus stop and make a quick stop at Clint's to give him a topaz, then head to the mines and give the dwarf a topaz as well. The mines are currently in their dangerous state, and I decide to focus on grinding for radioactive ore, and we luckily find a node on floor 41. We collect the ore and slay the mushrooms, and what's this? A galaxy soul? We just got extremely lucky with a galaxy soul as a drop from one of the mushrooms here. I've been wanting to get these as drops for a long time now, since I have gotten them from enemies in previous playthroughs, but have not in this one until now. So this is very nice, it saves us from spending 40 key gems on the one from the golden walnut room, or 10 radioactive bars from ones from the island trader who offers them on the last day of a month. We will need two more galaxy souls to upgrade our hammer, so it would be extremely nice if we could get more from enemies, but most likely we will buy them from the island trader for 10 radioactive bars each, and that is only if we can buy multiple from the island trader. I'm not sure if the trader offers more than one at a time. We continue grinding for radioactive ore by repeatedly checking floor 41, which is supposedly the best floor for farming it, we cannot use our normal elevator floor to floor strategy because ore nodes will not spawn on elevator floors, so the next best is to just go to floor 40 and then straight down to floor 41 to check for ore. If the floor has nothing good on it, I'll go straight back up and repeat, but if there is radioactive ore or anything else interesting, I will go ahead and mine or slay enemies. And if we get ladders, I may continue downward as well to see if we get anything else interesting. A little after 11 p.m., we slay some more mushrooms and get another galaxy soul, which is pretty insane. I have no idea what the drop rate is, 
but it has to be pretty rare as we have not gotten them before today and we most likely just are experiencing very insane luck right now. I'm not too sure how much in-game luck affects the drop rate. Today is only a neutral luck day and we only have plus one luck from the spicy eel, but we do have the burglar's ring, which rolls the chance for an item to drop one more time if it does not drop the first time, which boosts our chance of getting the drops from enemies by an insane amount, and the same should apply for the galaxy souls. I definitely would like some more precise information on the galaxy soul drop rate, but from what I can tell, it is a very rare drop, but it can for sure be dropped from the mushroom enemies in the dangerous mines and most likely any enemy type. If you are looking to grind for galaxy souls, just make sure you have a burglar's ring equipped as it will greatly increase your odds of finding one. We continue grinding in the mines until 2am and pass out. Moving on to spring day 23. Today is a super luck day and we have no harvests or birthdays to tend to so we can just get our stuff organized and work straight on over to the desert for a skull cavern dive. I reset the first floor a couple times to get a good one but do find two diamonds while doing so and eventually get a ladder from a cluster of rocks. On floor 3 we consume a magic rock candy which will be most useful in helping us get deep in the cavern fast. The plus 5 luck buff it gives will increase our ladder rate by 5% and increase our treasure room rate by 5% and of course impact all the other little things that luck impacts like enemy rate, drop rate, and ore rate. I decide to use only one magic rock candy today because we can only obtain one per week and I feel like it might be better to use two across two days rather than two in one. I believe this now because the magic rock candy's luck buff helps most with ladder rates to help get down quickly and once we are way past floor 100 we will start to find big clusters of iridium ore whether or not we have the luck bonus. Sure, the increased luck may increase iridium spawn rates slightly, but I feel overall the magic rock candy is better saved for the start of a different dive rather than continuing the current one. Of course, towards the end of this whole playthrough, we'll challenge ourselves to make it as deep as we can in Skull Cavern and use two magic rock candies for fun things like that, but for now, I believe it's best to use just one per dive so we can have more dives that utilize a magic rock candy when trying to get the initial push past floor 100 to start finding bigger chunks of iridium ore. Let me know what you all think in the comments, I'm curious to know what you have to say. We end up making it to floor 220, but more importantly, collect 630 iridium ore. This might not seem like much compared to last dive, but remember, last dive we used 167 crafted staircases, leaving only 21 for this dive, so I only used them when very necessary, and we ended with 15, meaning we used only 6 crafted staircases. We move on to spring day 24, which is a good humor luck day, and the day of the flower dance. This festival begins in the Cindersap forest at 9am, and we must arrive no later than 2pm. We must attend this festival this year, since we skipped it last year, and must purchase the tub of flowers recipe and a rare pro from Pierre's stand there for the craft everything perfection goal. Of course, we want to make the most of the day before we head over at 2pm, so we begin by crafting 20 new crystallariums and place them in the jade shed. We harvest the greenhouse and head back inside the house to give Grobus a wild horseradish. And we reach 12 and a half hearts with him now, which awards us with a star drop. And I believe this is our final star drop, so now we can check off the collect every star drop from the perfection goals. We head down to the cellar and cycle the cheese in the casks and then get our inventory organized before heading out to the bus stop. We have another cycle of starfruit wine ready, so we collect all the wine while inserting new starfruit to brew, and collect syrups from the tappers here as well. Just don't mind the 11 kegs towards the bottom left that I definitely am gonna come back for and cycle, just don't mind those at all. We finish cycling the starfruit wine on the road and inside of the tunnel, then head through the backwoods and into the railroad area where we collect all of our oak resin, maple syrup, and pine tar that is ready to be collected. 
After this, we warp back to the farm, cycle some gold in the furnaces, then head to the bottom, right by the Cinderset forest entrance, which would begin the festival. But I'm greedy and want to use the 30 more in-game minutes that we have, so I very quickly collect the row from the fish pond, which is quite risky, as I was not sure if this would put me past 2pm or not, but thankfully, the clock remained at 1.50, and we were able to enter the Flower Dance Festival. We head straight over to Pierre and purchase the Rare Crow, Tub of Flowers recipe, and the Dandelions and Daffodils as well, because we have extra money, and why not? The Rare Crow is one of the eight that are needed to receive the recipe for the Deluxe Scarecrow, and of course the Tub of Flowers recipe is a recipe, and we need all the crafting recipes to craft for the Craft Everything Perfection Goal. We ask Alex to be our dance partner, since we do get 250 friendship points with the NPCs we choose to dance with, and Alex is our lowest right now. After talking to every NPC for a little extra friendship points, we talk to Lewis to begin the dance. We... dance? And poor Haley is left out because we took her man, Alex, but that's okay. We head back to the farm at 10pm, which leaves us a small amount of time to finish up some farm chores. We craft only 40 new kegs as I have run out of wood, and place them in our keg shed, and finish cycling all the starfruit wine kegs. We prepare our inventory for a school cavern dive tomorrow, and I pass out, moving on to spring day 25. No matter what the luck is, I plan to do a school cavern dive, as we do not have any tasks to attend to today, but this time, the luck is the worst luck possible, which will make the dive a bit less lucrative. I decide to make the most out of the super bad luck day, and challenge myself to make it past floor 100 on a bad luck day without using any crafted staircases. This means no skipping undesirable floors, not even monster floors or spiral floors. Since our inventory was pretty much prepared, we were able to work straight over to the desert, pick up a magic rock candy since it's Thursday, although we won't be using it today. We drop off items we won't be using in the Junmo chest, including the crafted staircases and magic rock candy. We just have our usual tools and food items, then a few cherry bombs and some gold ore to start out with. We enter the cavern, and I focus on getting ladders and holes down, and we do get lucky with a few holes. We are met with a few spiral floors, which eat up quite a bit of time, but luckily we do not find any monster or dino floors. I definitely used the explosive slingshot more than I have ever before, and it certainly helped out a lot. Normal bombs and the ring swaps also helped out a lot, and I also slayed enemies more frequently than normal to try to get the ladder rate bonus. If you are interested in seeing this dive in real time, I did decide to livestream it last minute just in case anyone was interested in seeing the footage, so I will leave a link to that. We did indeed make it past floor 100 and to floor 128, collecting 447 iridium ore and 10 prismatic shards, which I feel is pretty decent for this dive. We are nearing the end of spring, so next time we will have to make any necessary preparations for summer. The most important thing will be planting parsnip seeds on the last day to preserve our farmland for summer day one. Next time, we will also have some more advancements towards 100% perfection and finish up some quests we currently have, including giving out more gifts for Key's kindness, and at the same time, it gets us closer to the max friendship perfection goal. If you are looking forward to what's to come in future videos, please consider subscribing so you can be sure to see them when they come out. And I would greatly appreciate it if you left a comment, as the comments help me out a bunch, and I do greatly enjoy reading your comments. As always, thank you for watching, and goodbye.